me and spend time with my family you know so to be honest this family is the strongest support system that you will have will ever have because they are going to be with you through thick and thin no matter what and the friends i feel this is the best way to have a great set of friends when you know that they are there with you when the chips are down and when you're down in the dumps they are a keeper so yeah i feel this is what i follow whenever i'm under pressure and there is a lot of expectation such a lovely answer round of applause after after hearing you speak so passionately about family and friends i know i can't be your family but i'd love to be your friend shreyas yes. uh i i would still love to just ask uh, because you've been so honest and vulnerable i'd still love to ask just one other one one further question uh because i was talking about failures and, and in your eyes on a day where you feel you have not performed as well as you wanted to and you have failed is there again you've spoken on med meditation mindfulness is there something you do on those days you know where you are where you feel like you have let yourself down so whenever i realize that i haven't performed to my expectation i just try to learn what i did wrong i try to acknowledge i see i feel it is important to have self compassion where you acknowledge yourself at times yeah. on your achievements you enjoy tiny occasions wherever you go for practice with your teammates spend that time quality time basically rather than spending you know a lot of time and distracting yourself and i go out for holidays at times to completely unwind myself as i as i mentioned to one of my friends over here right now that when i'm not playing it is hard for me to watch tv and see other players play so i like to yeah play playstation on some other sport i love football love watching football and uh, i try to you know see to it that i'm completely focused on something else but not cricket so this is how i try to cope with you know my failure especially i don't like to call it failure because you always learn you keep learning Absolutely. from new things Absolutely. so either you have strength or there are limitations so there are no weaknesses love that what a what a fantastic pov and uh, um I I love what you spoke about self compassion because I feel like I think uh, we speak a lot about kindness and you know to others we forget to talk about kindness to ourselves and I think that's a very important part of what is empathetic leadership not just being uh, kind uh, as a leader to your team but also making sure you are prioritizing your own happiness and you know coming to that uh, again as I said I think I've been very inspired and and uh, uh, I find it so admirable Anand that RPG group has all these incredible policies you know which which uh, prioritize the well being of uh, employees at the workplace and uh, i would just you know as as one of the leaders of this group i would love for you to tell us what are these initiatives that at least a couple of initiatives if you could tell us that you have put in place uh, to ensure employee well being and if you could also tell us why you thought that was important i think it'll be really great for the other you know leaders over here to hear not just the initiative but the thought behind it sure Uh, so i think uh, one is there are a lot of similarities between gen z and even uh, gen x gen y but i'd say that uh, what are the differences and the few things that come to my mind i'd say are that uh, gen z is really a very uh, purposeful group of people they want to work in companies that do more than just make money they want to work in companies that are impacting the world making the world a better place and they are doing something meaningful so i think that is one thing that really differentiates them and one of the things that we try and do in our companies as i shared about our vision of unleashing talent and touching lives that's part of our vision our vision in ciet which is the tire company is about making mobility safer and smarter every day so it's not only that we looking for profits but also how do we make our customers lives better and that's what i think is very important for gen z uh the other thing is uh, they're looking for a more holistic life uh, in comparison to maybe the previous generations for them as you touched upon mental well being is very important physical well being is important work is important family relationships all of that is important and i think that comes into culture and not only policies but what do we believe in when we speak to our people that in the end uh, we believe a lot in giving them freedom so 
we're not going to monitor how many hours of work you're working every day, what days are you coming to work, but as long as you're delivering your work and you're doing what is expected out of you, that's good enough. Whether you do it at home and you come to work at 12 o'clock because your mother's not well, yeah. or you, uh, you know, you've taken a late flight in and uh, you want to come in a little late, and that's fine. And just kind of having that trust itself makes all the difference. So uh, these are just some uh, cultures and policies and beliefs that we have. I also think that the Gen Z really looks at uh, valuing diversity, inclusion, that element of individualism that makes each person special, that uh, you know, you're a creative person or you're an analytical person and so on and so forth. So how do we appreciate that and not have those bureaucracies that are there in the system, that I'm a senior manager, you're a junior manager, so you listen to me, but I will value you because you are special, because you have that creative ability that I may not have and so on. So just kind of having that additional respect uh, at a human level becomes important. So I think these are some things that we really value. And what we've done differently is a lot of these policies have been recommended by the Gen Zers. Yeah. So a lot of them, uh, we have a team, they recommend policies and then they kind of get approved by uh, the larger team in a way. So uh, for example, we found in the case of sustainability, uh, the senior people were less passionate about sustainability than, say, the younger Gen Zers. So they kind of have formed the group who have taken on the mantle of making uh, the company and group more sustainable because they're just so much more passionate about that. That's incredible. Can we have a round of applause for this, please? You know? And as I said, it's been so uh, amazing that a lot of the things that you're already doing at the workplace is also the outcome of the report that we've done. Uh, so if, uh, you know, if you get a hands on that report, there is something called the Commandments of Happiness, you know, broken down as H-A-P-P-I-N-E-S-S -S, from the Gen Z. We've heard the Gen Z across the country and we have come up with these commandments. And I think if you implement them at those workplaces like Anand already has, like the RPG group already does, you also try to do the same. I think uh, it would really make for better and more positive workplaces for young people. And I think that's the note I want to end on. Uh, if there's a, I know you've given a long answer on that, Anand, in any case, but if there's one thing that you think makes for a happy workplace, uh, if all of us can kind of answer that, what is that one thing that you think makes for a happy workplace? I would say freedom. So just kind of uh, trusting people and giving them freedom to work how they like. Fantastic. Trusting in people. I think you should note this down. These are really important things. Please note them down. Uh, you can also tweet them out. Hashtag. There's all these people over here who you can tag as well. Feel free to do that. Uh, Niharika, one thing that makes for a happy workplace. Happy employees. Just keep them workplace. happy. Workplace. Right? Just workplace. Yeah. Your, your, your workplace. My workplace. Yeah. What is that just one thing? Just me happy because it's just me, myself <laughs> and I. So if I'm happy, my workplace is happy. We love that for me. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I meant your industry, but yeah, that also completely oh, my works. my industry. I don't think, <laughs> let's, it's, that's a therapy session. Never mind. <laughs> well, okay, I think, I think being, trying to keep yourself happy is what makes yes. for a happy workplace. I Inner think that's a good peace. answer. Inner peace. Absolutely. Shares? For me, it's all about strong bonding. So, fun and enjoyable moments that fosters the sense of camaraderie. Yes. One Love it. Strong bonding at the workplace. Yeah. Navya? Uh, I would say equality and kindness. Absolutely, Ryan. absolutely, equality and kindness. I'll again add, I think, just listening to young people, which is what we've also tried to do with the report. If you just listen as much as possible in the workplaces, you can absolutely create a positive environment. Uh, can we have a round of applause to all these incredible people over here who have uh, uh, given their time and efforts? Uh, I, I just, uh, is the other question, and uh, Madonna, are, are you going to be doing the Q&As or are we going to no, be? You can you can take if it. anyone has questions for the people over here, please feel free to audience? ask. Thank you so much, Nikhil, Neharika, Anand, Shreyas, and Navya for sharing your thoughts. But it doesn't end here. I would like to just sum up by saying happiness is truly a state of mind, right? It's not about waiting for that big moment, that big dream to be fulfilled, that you'll be happy. I would say enjoy the journey and not just the destination. With that, we open the floor for Q&A. Can I have a mic in the audience, please? We'd love, uh, you know, leaders, but as, as well as young people, if anyone has questions, please feel free to ask. You so know, could you stand? I, yeah. We'd see you. Yes. Hi, I'm Sam Balsara. You know, as I was listening to all the wonderful thoughts, my thinking has been that 
you have to learn and train your mind to be happy otherwise you know nothing in the world is going to make you happy in in whatever state you are you can easily lull yourself into believing that you are unhappy i'd like to hear uh, you know the panelists view on this or also if your research threw this up because sure. i think it's a very essential condition to your state of well being indeed it is would Anyone young people you would like, like to, to know navya what do you think about this why am i being she's, chosen he's, as the he's first talking one about <laughs> he's talking about a mindset that he's had they're talking about young people in Everyone the research yours, yeah. niharika navya you're the I'm youngest of the lot i'm a sad person so you can take <laughs> <laughs> i mean at least what i i i agree with you actually and i think we've all probably at some point in our lives been told that we have to train ourselves to be happy and um, maybe for the longest time i did that as well but i think what changed for me is just gratitude i think gratitude for very small things in life uh, gratitude for having a roof over your head and food on a plate just the bare minimum that we're able to have that on a daily basis um i think that just you know being more grateful makes me more happy because it makes me realize that i have a lot more uh, you know and often we are in this race of just trying to succeed and and gain things and we actually forget all that we already have so i think that gratitude would be my answer it's <laughs> a great answer that's why we go to you see we go to the youngest people because that's what is i'm taking shreyas as i am work well under pressure <laughs> <laughs> anyone else would like to add to that anand shreyas yahan ka anyone no i Yeah, just to add, you know, I absolutely agree. I think happiness is something that can be learned. I think it's uh, through a set of possibly practical.